Welcome to the 1000 Comics Podcast. It's your host, Matt Heath. How you doing, folks? Boy, do I got an episode for you today. Uh, Today, I have a guest that came all the way up from Harlem, New York to come do a show here at the Shish Lounge here in uh, here in Connecticut, and um, she she spent some time with me here and uh, did my podcast, and I'm very grateful for it. Um, she's also the author of the book "What's Up, God? What Do You Want?" Great, great book. Great girl. Um, Rated Rima is her name, and uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy. Her uh, interview, um, but first let me, um, I, I kind of want to talk about something um, that I went through recently, and um, I met with a shaman, I don't know if how many shamans you guys know, um, but I, I got in touch with my, uh, my spirit animal, and um, now, as you guys know, I, I you know, I I am. I was raised Catholic, and um, you know, I I do believe in Jesus. All that I say to us is I believe in him, like I believe in Santa Claus or something. No, Jesus, he's my guy. Apparently, he's my spirit guide. Then you have spirit animals. I don't know, but I met with a shaman to get in touch with my spirit animal, and I want to tell you guys the story. Now, apparently. Um, you know, some people think you need peyote or whatever to get, to, you know, or drugs to, to meet your uh, spirit animal. Apparently, all you need is a shaman and uh, for them to have you uh, put into a meditative space, uh, like a meditative state that involves drumming. You know, they, they start the drumming, they put you in the meditative state, uh, but first you have to, I guess, pray to the north, pray to the the pray to the east, pray to the south, pray to the west. And then and then you go into this meditative state and you um and you meet with the spirit animal. And it's kind of like therapy and it's kind of like meditation and it's kind of like like all these cool things happen at once. But it, it wasn't at all like I expected it to be. You know, at first it's first of all my spirit animal. I'm not sure if it's coyote or a dog or a hyena. It's definitely some kind of wild dog that laughs. There's a lot of laughing. And I was, it was laughing, you know, in my face, basically, when I, I first got into this meditative state. And then it, it ran off. And as it runs off, I kind of get left behind. And all of a sudden, the 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 spirit animal takes form of the uh, of the big bad wolf in a in a storybook I had when I was a kid of the three little pigs and the big bad wolf, and the um, the wolf just scared the uh, scared the living daylights out of me when I was a kid. This wolf, and um, I I I look up, and suddenly I'm I'm a little kid again, and I'm and I got this book in front of me, and, and I. And I lay back down and I go back to sleep and I and I, I I'm having this reoccurring dream I used to have when I was a kid, where my dad throws me into a swimming pool, and it starts to spiral like a like a, like a giant drain faucet, like I'm going down this drain, and then all of a sudden, I open my eyes and I'm in my apartment, and I'm watching The Simpsons of all things. And, um, you know, it's that episode where Homer and Lisa are meditating themselves in those meditation tanks. And all of a sudden, the screen starts rolling down on the TV, and there's something inside the TV. And this wolf puppet pops out, and it goes, make a TV show about me. And I'm like, all right, I'll make a TV show about you. And then it starts laughing hysterically. <laughs> You're going to make a TV show about me. That's fucking crazy. And all of a sudden, um, that's that was the ending. That was, that was the entire trip, I guess. Now, you don't need peyote or any kind of drug to, to do this. All, apparently, all you need is shaman. Um, some drumming. This was you know, The drumming was on YouTube. This was like new age spirit animal stuff. There wasn't even a real drummer there. It was just drumming on YouTube. So 
I don't know. Check it out. Check. Get in touch with your spirit animal, folks. It's. I, I feel like it actually. It actually did wonders for me. Um. Let me uh, do a little ad read for you. You've, you've probably heard a lot about cannabidiol or CBD, but have you heard about the plant science company that are taking the lead in providing the highest quality CBD nationwide? At your CBD store, Simsbury, you will find a fantastic staff that creates a comfortable environment where you can fi- get the, your questions answered and find the, relief, find the relief you need. They will be your number one source for providing quality education about it products for you and your pet or spirit animal i don't know if spirit animals need cbd they probably don't like i said all you need is a shaman i guess they offer a full line of edibles creams usda certified oils and more all developed under guidance of their phd analytical chemists and health leaders across the industry and to back up their story they also provide extensive third-party testing to ensure what's listed on the products is actually in the products they're located at 1243 Hot Meadow Street, Simsbury, and open seven days a week. Give them a call at 860-217-1433. Visit their website at ycbdsimsbury.com. Or stop in for free samples of the highest quality products you can find. Your CBD store, Simsbury, where good health its home. Now, if you guys want to donate some money directly to the podcast, be a uh, sponsor yourself. Just send a Venmo over to at thank you masked man, like the Lenny Bruce album, at thank you masked man, and I would greatly appreciate that um, to, to start providing better, awesomer, newer episodes for you. Um, Rated Rima came all the way up from Harlem to do a show at the Shish Lounge. We had a great time hanging out together. Um, and uh, you're really going to enjoy this episode. And the name of her book is What's Up, God? What do you want? It's on Amazon.com. So check it out. And uh, please enjoy this interview. Welcome to the 1000 Comics Podcast. It's your host, Matt Heath. I am sitting today with a woman that goes by many names, Rima the Great, Rima Harvell. You told me one yesterday that's your stage name. That's probably the one I should have remembered. (laughs) Rated Rima. Rated Rima, which will be, she'll be performing tonight at the Shish Kebab Lounge, the Shish Lounge. Over in West Hartford, and um, you're visiting all the way up from uh, Harlem. We're here yeah. at we're here at what what I think this is the earliest I've ever done a podcast six forty five a.m. How are you feeling? <laughs> I feel good. I'm up. You're awake. I am. You got your tea. I have my tea. And they didn't have the they didn't have the nutriment at the Seven Eleven. That down sucks. the street. I'm sorry. We should just boycott the 7-Eleven down the block. You know, it's it's the thing is I think you know the the supply and demand at the 7-Elevens in New York. It's like I feel like people probably like treat the 7-Eleven down there like it's the grocery store. So they really probably have more. They would have more in a 7-Eleven in Harlem than they would. Here, well, it's an energy drink. It's a Nutriment is like a milkshake energy drink. So I would think yeah. they would have it everywhere. Everybody, I've seen it. I you know. I don't like see it everywhere though. That's because y'all up here. Yeah, like boom things. It's the boons. They call it the boondocks. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, oh, so Connecticut is the boondocks. <laughs> yeah. Really? It's like rural area. <laughs> Nobody goes to. I mean. <laughs> Here, because I'm close to the Hartford area, I'm like, what? Because we're about to go this evening to West Hartford. You're gonna see it's actually like pretty populated over there. It's not. I mean, a lot of Connecticut is very rural, though. Right. Yeah. But you're you're from Harlem. I am. Born and raised. No. No. Bronx baby, Harlem baby, right. Brooklyn, Bronx. And you told me that. I should have known that already. Bronx. You're a Bronx baby. Harlem made me. Brooklyn grown. Okay. 
Okay. Yes. I was born in the Bronx. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So t- take me through your life story. I Can't want to hear do that. It. It's okay. a lot to unpack. I wouldn't know where to start. But let me try. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was born and raised in the Bronx until my early teenage years. And then mid-teenage I was, uh, we moved to Harlem, and I've been in Harlem ever since. Okay. And that's pretty much it. And I still live in Harlem as an adult with my children. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, why, um, why the move? Do you know when you were a kid, why, why, what, what was the deal with the move? My mother moved around a lot when yeah. we were younger, so it was just what it was. However, I'm happy that she became stationary in Harlem because we moved a lot when I was young. Yeah. Like, every three, four years, uh, we were moving into a new apartment. Yeah. So, it was like there was no stability. Yeah. And then, once we moved to Harlem, about three years after that, I started getting out on my own. And within five years between that time, I would land in my own apartment and been in Harlem since. Okay. Okay. So, you mentioned kids. How many kids do you have? I have four children. Three on earth, one in heaven. Yep. 21, my oldest, she's 21 years old. My second oldest would have been 19 this year. Right. And my third oldest, she is uh, 15 this year. And my son, he is 11 this year. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like you got your hand, hands full. Man, they got their hands full with their mom. So, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. My son is a Fortnite king. Yeah. Oh my God! I hate it that he's on this game. As a as a time. teacher, I I get frustrated with the fort, and not so much Fortnite anymore. Now they play this new game called Among Us. Do your kids play oh that my, game? My daughter is a player of Among Us. I tried to play it. Have you tried to play it? I haven't tried to play it, but the kids try to talk me into it all the time. <laughs> I got killed. <laughs> I thought I was being safe. You gotta kind of like catch on to it. So you're right. like fixing the ship. And there's somebody that's a, a imposter, I guess, that should, like, find you and kill you. And if you make it with fixing all of the, I guess, like, uh, the goals or whatever, if you get the list of goals right, then you win. But if you die before you can complete the mission, then that's it. Right. And, uh, you know, it's funny because it's, it's like, we're, we're, like, I feel like that's that's for the kids, like, that stuff, yes. right? But, like, you noticed my Super Nintendo in, in my apartment here. The, like, the Super Mario Brothers. I love That kind of Mario stuff. Brothers. That's more your speed. No, it's not more my speed. It's just nostalgic. I think, um, I, when I look at Super Mario Brothers and such, I think about a time where I actually, um, where I actually took over and flipped the game a bunch of times. Yeah. Like, I used to flip the game constantly. You blow in the cartridge. No, like flip the game. Like uh, you play to the end, yeah, and then you flip it. Like the game. Will oh, flip right, 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 right. Like the and then it would be kind of like harder in the in the second time around. Not necessarily. It's just weird. So if you ever play Super Mario Brothers and you beat every level, yeah, like every level, it starts over. Then it starts over. But I know. It starts over with Mario heads as the as the um as the what the hell was it the turtles? So the turtles with the shell. It has a Mario head on it, and then you have to beat the Mario heads. It's weird. It's just... I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, you don't, I think you're you don't remembering remember that? it wrong. Okay. Because I've beat it too. I don't remember any turtles with Mario heads. Okay, then you're not. You didn't see it. Let me look it up. We're gonna look it up. Mario, uh, Super Mario, Mario heads. Okay, I might have to just take you on your word for this. On. The turtle. Just so we don't have a bunch of dead air. We're wait, not gonna wait, have dead air. We're yeah. right here. We're we're together. I'm still talking. Okay. And it was Kuba. So Kuba turned into Mario heads. Like the, first first of all, his name is Koopa. Kuba. 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 Remember That's Dennis saying. Hopper played him in the movie? Oh my god. King Koopa. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I loved that movie. Did you like the movie? Yes, I yeah. did. I John did. John Leguizamo as as Luigi. Uh huh. Bob I Hoskins as like who would who they didn't have Italian guys play <laughs> play the plumbers. <laughs> they had a, it way. was a Latino and a British actor. Like I think that I mean that movie did have a lot of problems, but I think that was the main problem. He didn't have Italian guys. Right. 
displaying that. It was crazy. Yeah. I'll have to show you another time. But yeah, it's uh, it's when you flip the boards. I call it flipping because you play all the way to the end and it goes mm. over. But I flipped the board like five, six times. I'm sensing a theme here because you, you, um, like the Super Mario Brothers, mm -hmm. you lean towards the Tony Soprano mug to drink your tea out of. All right. And you work with the mayor's office. I do. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean a theme? Why would that be a theme? I'm just saying there's a theme of Italians in your in, in your life. You, I feel like you gravitate towards Italian. You know what? I don't... I guess. I don't know. Never looked at it that way. I like the Tony Soprano movies. I, the, the, the show. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. I loved how it ended. Um, I watched the whole thing and I binge watched. And mind you, I didn't even watch it when it was on. I yeah. watched it when it was off. I watched I, it when it was off too. I usually watch a lot of like series when they're off because it's better it's, to do it that way, especially with a drama. You can kind of like get the whole story. Like it, you don't have to wait till the next week to watch the episode. Correct. You, know? you can just binge watch. So I've been binge watching a lot of stuff when it comes down to working with the mayor's office. I currently work. For an organization that is um, funded by the mayor's office and the city of New York. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yes. I can see that. But that just happened. It's not even me. So, I think that having a thing for Italians would be more if you're pulled into that. Well, when it comes oh, to like, Cuomo, we probably have a thing for you. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be joking about that. Cuomo? <laughs> um, I don't think so. I think a lot of people, and, and even, can I talk about that? If you want to, I, you're the one that works with the mayor's office. I say, if you if you want to get into that, that's fine. I I, I, I was I was trying to tread lightly. Look, I can curse. Yeah, I think it's bullshit, and I know that that sounds crazy, but I just feel in my heart like it's it's crazy. It's really like we're in the middle of this pandemic. Let's just deal with this pandemic right now. Yeah, you know what I mean. There's so much that we need to be doing and focused on, and we get all these distractions now. Do I feel that? Um, women's rights should be ignored or stuff like that i feel like there's times where people do push the limit of what they're doing um, right and that's understood and i i feel like that but let's look at the work of a person let's get some stuff done you know what i mean nobody's perfect um but uh i just i don't know i feel weird about the whole situation and every time it comes up i'm like oh my god can we like get some shit done please yeah that's how I feel. Like, so I'm not really like on his side, that side. I'm just waiting for the results to come back. Like, I'm one of those. Like, is he the daddy or not? Like, <laughs> let the results I mean, come in. I think my main problem with the mayor in New York, it, it, I, it's like I, I realize he's got all this, um, you know, sexual har harassment stuff following him. But like that, like those few days when he was just laying off everyone in New York, and he was he he was getting on TV, and he goes. And he's like, I don't. He's like, I only need essential workers. And then he just like <sighs> sipping his Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Like, I just thought that was that was ridiculous. You know, like, cause how essential is Dunkin' Donuts? And why? And why was I? I feel like it was a clear product placement. placement. You know what I mean? But everything is everything. You know what I mean? You're in front of the camera. Everything is everything. Yeah. Nothing is going to be you. Strategy, strategically done. It just is what it is. And we, at the time, had a lot of people dying and shit. Yeah. People are still dying. I'm just happy that, at this point, we have more knowledge. You know, people learn fast. So instead of it being this this constant thing, everybody's now able to use their, their, their knowledge to help it. Like, we now know what ventilators do. We know how much we have. We know how... To react if this happens or that happens, it goes left or if it goes right, we know how to proceed forward. You know, we had no knowledge when this first happened. Right. You know what I mean? All this shit happened, everybody dropped. And it was getting crazy. Yeah. It, it looked like a movie. Yeah. I was like, Aliens is coming. It's over. I used to think I was yeah. waiting for God, but I think Aliens is coming. I think Aliens is next, so Apocalypse. Like, it was like an apocalyptic kind of feel. Totally. You know what I mean? We're about to have the walking dead just running through here. Yeah. That's how much people was dying. Like, it was like, oh, we go going. You know what I mean? I'm happy we made it, though. I'm happy you're here. I'm happy we here. Yeah. yeah. But it's 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 kind of crazy how, like, um, in, the, in those, like, disaster movies, New York is always, like, the first to go. 
You never noticed that? The epicenter of all kind of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Like even they even just came out with um, King Kong versus Godzilla. Like you, I'm pretty sure it's. I I haven't even seen the trailer for it, but I'm pretty sure it's New York that's going to be destroyed in that one, right? Something with New York. Something with New York is always New York. But I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Like it couldn't be like a Kansas City, Dakota, something like that. Because it's it's all about putting asses in the seats in the movie theater it's like if like there's there's more people in new york to go see the movie it's gonna be you know i mean but don't they film like all of the uh the transformer movies and stuff like that and like all them other areas well they film it all all that stuff like is, is filmed movies. now in front of a green screen so it's like it's all it's all hollywood magic right i get it i'm just saying like stranger things and all that that's not that in new york that's you know what true. I mean? We have a lot of alien stuff that happens outside of New York. Yeah. New York has the disaster shit. It's weird. Like, look at how it's set up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to get aliens or something. What'd you do? What'd you think? Um, aliens? aliens or apocalyptic? Um, I don't know. I definitely thought that there's there's definitely some type of conspiracy with, like, you don't know, like how they say, like, The Simpsons predicts the future? Oh, man. You know, you ever oh, hear people talking yeah, about that? I'm just crazy. Well, I just know that, like, the in the Simpsons movie, when they drop the dome over the town, it's kind of like the pandemic, right? Because no one's able to go anywhere, and right. we're, they're, they're all stuck together. Right. And in the commercial for the dome, Tom Hanks was in the commercial for the dome, right? Okay. I don't know if you saw the Simpsons, but but Tom Hanks is in the Simpsons movie, and he's the person that the government gives the credibility to, to drop the dome over the town. Now, who is the first famous person to get the coronavirus? Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> right. That's funny, but they, you know, somebody at the Simpsons is doing something. I think. People belief system is creating whatever it is to happen. Because if you believe that The Simpsons is going to predict the future, The Simpsons will predict the future. Yeah, but I... And now it's very coincidental. I totally feel like that, like, the government can get people on the side of, we need to protect ourselves from this coronavirus by using Tom Hanks as, as their puppet. Because everybody saw him in Saving Private Ryan when they were in high school... He's the voice of reason in Toy Story, and like every and like I, everybody's seen Forrest Gump at least three times. Correct. You know. Correct. So you figured that he was the figure to do to inject with this, or to say he had it? Because I, for a while, I thought people was just saying he had it, and then they gave it to Idris Elba. Well, not gave it to him, but then he said he had it, which was like the first black person to have it. That was celebrity wise. Right. That was weird. <sighs> Have you gotten vaccinated? I've got the first one. When do you go back to the second one? Um, in, a, in about a week or so. Mm-hmm. I have yet to get vaccinated, but I found that I had it. And I don't, I don't want this whole podcast to be, um, you know, coronavirus conspiracy theories. But you're the one that brought up aliens, so I might as nah, well keep we going. Talk, we it. keep talking about whatever. I think the I, I don't want to say the um, vaccine gave me like super human strength or anything like that but i feel like there's been a change in myself since the vaccine and it's it's that all i think about is baseball now and it might be because baseball season started it might be because i'm the baseball coach of the school but like i really like bury myself in thinking about nothing but baseball that's weird but were you doing that beforehand? No. Um, do you think that... that I've kind of even set, like, comedy, like, to the side. Like, I still go to open mics and stuff, and, like... But I haven't worked on the podcast at all since I've gotten my um, vaccine. It's just been baseball, baseball, baseball. Hmm. And that's for the school. And the school's the one that gave me the vaccine. So, in the gym of all places. Hmm. That's very uh, convenient. <laughs> yeah. So, do you think there's some type of conspiracy there? I don't know. 
I think you just like baseball. <laughs> I think I think that's just what, what it is, and I think an opportunity came at the same time you got vaccinated, and you just focused on the opportunity. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? It it probably excited you to where it just like you know took over all other kind of thinking. Yeah. Uh, being sideways thinking. So I don't think so. I'm not scared to get the vaccine. I just want to give it some time. I um a couple of people I know have was like, and I it made sense. Was like, give it like six months and see how it works with everybody. Yeah. Before you go get it. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I might do that. Um, I found out that I had the antibodies, so I had it, but I don't know when I had it. Yeah. I've been negative since January, right. and I have no smell. So, which is something else I haven't said yet on this podcast. But yeah. Um, but I'm negative. However, I took the antibodies test a week or so ago, and it came back positive. It's like the fuck. When we're doing it, I have it. But I do a lot of stuff, so it's bound. But I guess I'm asymptomatic. They say. Yeah. So I didn't have no kind of symptoms. If I had to think back to anything, um, I recall like taking Benadryl quite often for like maybe a two week span at some point. Yeah. Because I kept like having like phlegm, but I didn't really pay it no mind. Kept it going. Right. You know, it's it's funny. A nurse told me if um, you know if you have something with a lot of zinc in it, you won't get the coronavirus. You know, right. you'll be like, protected from the coronavirus. So. Um, you know what has a lot of zinc in it is Flintstone vitamins. Mm-hmm. So I like three of those a day now. Just regularly taking them. Yeah. Where it's like, but it's like, well, do we really got to be worried that worried about something that could be taken out by Flintstone vitamins? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. The whole situation is weird. Um, you know, we could talk about that forever, though. The whole situation is weird. Never in our lifetime did I think we would see something like this. Yeah. Where it would affect us completely. Did you know that um, that pink thing on the inside of your eyes? Right in the crease of your eyes where your nose is at, the bridge? Okay. It used to cover your whole eye. Like, we were like reptiles, kind of. We were like fish people. Right. Okay. That's why it's still there. Um, however, I think that because of the mask, yeah. we'll probably be with masks for like another century or some shit. And that will start turning into people's bodies. Well, yeah, you know something like we'll evolve, we'll evolve, we'll evolve and adapt to, a, to the mask, right? But honestly, like, how come that hasn't happened to um, like um, Muslim people already? Because they wear masks all the time. It's I guess a evolution. They wasn't wearing masks for a while beforehand. How but you think well? But I, I think there's I, maybe not evolution, but I think there's definitely something to it. Like, you ever seen the movie The Jerk with Steve Martin? And he, 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 like, mistakenly invents that thing, the opti-grab, the, like, that little circle thing that goes on the glasses, and it makes everyone cross-eyed okay. that wears it. So everyone that wears these glasses goes cross-eyed. And I'm, like, thinking, like, what if the masks, like, have, like, a similar, you know... I don't know. Well, it's like, you notice if you're wearing glasses while you're wearing the mask, like, the glasses fog up. So we're all right. breathing directly into our eyes now if right. you're wearing the mask. right. So, maybe you're right. Maybe there's something to it. Maybe the eyes will evolve somehow. Maybe we'll get that, like, layer back over our eyes. It'd be something. I think that evolution is going to have something to do with this new way of living. Yeah. But, yeah. That's that. We can talk about that now. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, how long have you been a comedian for? Since I came out the coach. I'm pretty sure I've been a comedian all my life. Yeah. Um, but to take comedy seriously, I just started taking it seriously in 2019. Uh, the first time I ever really played with on stage. So just before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The first time I really played on stage was in 2017. And I've been funny since forever. Um, I started internet radio. I started in internet radio in 2010. But it was in 2012 that I had my own talk show. For about maybe 23 months. And I did the show. And I'm a big girl. I did the show in full lingerie. Um, talked about a lot of raunchy random topics. And I was funny in the midst of that. But not knowing that I was a comedian. Right. I just was a personality. Yeah. That's just what I was. And that's what I loved to be. And then um, as time went on, I would still like do the same thing and talk and have these same conversations that was like really out of the box. That was actually the name of the show. And it was just crazy. 
And uh, sometime in 2016. Out of the Box was the name of the show? Out of the Box Radio. And there was a children's show on the Disney Channel back in the day called Out of the Box. I hope nobody's like looking up one and finds the... They're, 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 you know, they're going to be looking up the kids show and, and they're going to find you find, in lingerie. Definitely find me in lingerie. It's going to be funny. Um, so I had in 2016, I was, uh, I was running a radio station. And I engineer, I DJ, things of that nature. Right. I was doing audio engineering and station management. And there was a show that came on. And there was a guy named Rashad Bashir, which is out in the city. Shout out to him. And he had did a show alongside of one of my favorite DJs, DJ Dr. Hollywood. And shout out to him. And uh, they did a show. And I was talking to him one day. And he was like, you should really try it. And I was like, I'm not going to try stand up. I'm not doing that. And not that I was scared. It's just that I didn't think I could. You right. know? And then um, some time went on, and I started um, going to a local spot in Harlem called Mocha Lounge. And I went to Mocha Lounge, and I met Smokey Suarez. And um, I started talking to him, and I was supposed to have this some media work with him. And uh, we just got really cool. And I was like, I want to try it. And he was like, well, you can just do it and get butts and seats, right? That's what everybody yeah. say. So I was like, all right, whatever. So one day I went out. This was April of 2017. I went to a radio uh, radio a convention or something like that. It was something where we was doing like a showcase and it was like 30 different radio shows that was there. All right. Like, you know you know that's good advice though to say just do it. I feel like that I feel like a lot of people like ask like they're looking to become comedians and it's like people like give them all sorts of like bullshit advice that's like it's like too much where it's like that's really all it is. It's like you just have to start doing it, you know? Right. So I went live on the ride out, I went to Philly. I went live and I had a funny joke. Now I was going live all the time. I love going live, Instagram live, Facebook live, all of that. I love it. And I had a joke about breasts. Yeah. And I was talking to my friend about it and we were talking about boobies. And I was like, men that have bigger tits than an A cup have titties. Cause you can't call them pecs. Because then what do you call a woman that yeah. have A cups? You call them pecs or you call them titties. So I was like kind of doing like this <laughs> comparison between the two, but it was funny. And then I started talking about underwire and all kind of shit. And then I hit up Smokey and I said, I think I got something. I would like to try it. So about a week and a half after that, I was there taking pictures and he was like, come on up. Rima, come up. I was like, what me? So I went around and I talked about tits and I, I thought it was funny. And it was. And this lady goes, is my boobs big enough? And I reached down and grabbed one of her tits. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I come from a, a, a industry where that's okay. Yeah. So I'm not thinking I'm in a whole new playing field. And I grabbed the tit. And I was like, no, you know, they're little. And I kept going. Um, and that was like the highlight of everything. And I did it in 2017. And then I tried comedy about maybe four more times that year. I tried two different sets. I tried a really um, laid back set. And I tried a raunchy set, and my raunchy set won. Like, everybody was on the raunchy set one. I had, like, Facebook, um, uh, comedy, stuff about Facebook, stuff about social media. It just was weird. And I just was trying things. Um, but then I had stopped. So in 2018, I was asked to do Broadway Comedy Club. And I wore one of my corsets, because I also sell corsets. So I wore one of my corsets, and I was on a date. And I had to fix myself. And I shouldn't have did this without a bra. Oh, my God. My boobs fell out into my corset. And I couldn't do my set right because I was, like, on stage uncomfortable. So I kind of, like, did two jokes and I ran off the stage. And I kind of just left. And I didn't do comedy again for another year. Really? So, mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, wow. Uh, so a, a bomb at, at Broadway put you off it for a little while, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then, and then which which was it? The upstairs or the downstairs? Upstairs. Yeah. Upstairs always fuck me up. Downstairs is perfect for me. Um. So, about a year after that, a friend of mine by the name of J. Lot, he's been in the industry for about ten years. He wanted to do a roast on himself. Yeah. So I don't like him anyway. So I was like, all right, cool, I'll do it. Like he's a friend, but I don't like him. I right. don't know. It's weird to say that, but <laughs> I said, oh, I got a lot of shit to talk about with you. So I wrote out a bunch of stuff, and I had did the roast for him. That's when I met um, Jamie Smooth's brother. 
Tink um, Floyd. Tink Floyd. Tink Floyd. He's I been on him. the podcast as well. Yep. Shout out to him. I met him there, and I met quite a few other people there. Um, but I had was the only female out of like twelve guys. So I was like, you set this up like a porno. <laughs> You know, that's usually how it goes, <laughs> unfortunately. Like, but it should, like, there should be more females that's gonna crack on you. But anyway, um, and I said something about, uh, I guess I'm like the females that has, uh, I guess I'm the only female that never fucked Jay because the rest of them didn't come or some shit like that. Like, I had like a lot of like one hit liners and shit, but I felt really like I want to do this. Right. So at the towards the end of the year, I had put together a fundraiser to raise, I think, about twenty five hundred dollars. But we had like a short week to do it. And in four days, I raised with alongside of my team. We raised um, about twenty eight hundred or to like three thousand. Well, there you um, go. So I in a fundraiser comedy show. Yeah. And I had got all big players, everything. We, we packed the place out. And it was like uh, when I was promoting that. I was asked to do a comedy show and headline, which is at the end of the show, you, you know, you're the last person to go. I'm like a headline. I'm just getting back into this. I don't know if I can headline anything. And the day that it was, it was my son's birthday in 2000. And uh, my son that passed in 2019, it was his birthday. And oh. I was like, oh, I don't want to do nothing. You know, those days come up, you want to just stay home and nothing. And I was like, I'm going to go. And I kept telling myself, you're not going. You're not going. And I get dressed, and I'm I'm out the door. I'm on the train. I'm in Brooklyn. I'm going. And I'm happy I went because only two out of the five um, comedians showed up, which is how it is sometimes, right? Yeah. And I was like, how do I combat against these women? And the, the name in her profile is Comedian This. Like, my name isn't even Comedian This. You know what I mean? So I'm like, they're I mean, going to be that funny takes two seconds. You could just... Change, I, I, change it to comedian <laughs> if no, you wanted to. Like, but I I, I'm honestly firmly against that. Like putting comedian in like your name on Facebook. I'm like, is that necessary? Shouldn't people already know you're a comedian? I felt that they were funnier than me, and I never even met them. And I had like kind of defeated myself beforehand, but I went prepared. And it was a Mother's Day joke. It joke. It was um. Mama Jokes, that's what it was called, Mama Jokes Part 2. And I was like, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to pull it off. And I went, and I pulled it off, and it was really great. And then I said, I made a conscious decision. I did, like, another open mic or whatever, and I said, you know what? I'm going to do comedy. It's easy for me to do. I can write. What do I need to do comedy? A Metro card so I can get around yeah. and a pen and paper. Like, how hard is that? Yeah. If I'm naturally funny, I'm not scared of an audience, why not do it? Yeah. So I just was like, fuck it, let's do it. And I did it. And it's funny because um, going into the new year, I did a, I did a, a joint on the 31st of, the 30th of December. And I had took a clip from that, um, that set and I put it on Instagram. And I said, my only goal for 2020 is to open up two times for Lunell. Because I am a big Lunell fan. So, you know, Lunell, the comedian. Right. So I was like, I put it up. So a friend of mine reposted it and tagged her in it. And she reposted it from December 31st to January 1st. My set. Two minutes of my set was on her um, her stories. Really? Yes. Okay. So, so you were really excited about that. Hell yeah. yeah. And then, so when the whole month came in of January and February... I didn't do not one open mic. I literally was on everybody's um, flyer. So I was getting booked. Well, not financially booked, but like acts to be there. So yeah. I had like 15 shows. And a lot then of I guest started, spots, stuff like right, that. And then okay. I started doing my own open mics. So I did an open mic every week in Brooklyn at my own location. Where in Brooklyn? Uh, it was Crown Heights, Brooklyn. I had okay. a, I have a lounge studio space out there. Right. Still to this day, I can use this space if I need to. I um, I always thought when I was staying in New York that the the best open mics were in Brooklyn. Is I, that do you, do you think there's truth to that? I haven't been to many open mics. Yeah. Only open mics I've ever really been to was in Manhattan, Harlem, um, and everything else. Like I said, I was asked to come out. So right. to actually do an open mic, I never really thought of it that way. Um, but I've seen a lot of success come from Brooklyn open mics. Where you hear more about those mics than you do about the other ones. Although Harlem is on the rise 
And there's only one open mic in Harlem that I really like, love. Well, there's two that I love and appreciate. So everything right. else, I'm you just can, like, You can of, plug them. You can mention them on the show. Um, Mocha's Lounge and then Harlem Nights. Okay. So Mocha's Lounge usually was Mondays. Harlem Nights now have moved to Fridays. Um, Fridays and it's outside. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's Fridays afternoon and it's outside now. And he also like moves around. Rashad Bashir again. He moves around between... Hall of Nights, and he comes to, like, 135th Street in St. Nick and does it outside in the park. Right. So there's a lot of different stuff. That's cool. Out to, you got to have the outdoor shows. Right. Now. Right. Yep. So so what are, you, what are your, like, dreams in this business? Like, you, you have, like, some ultimate goals in comedy? Um, so, <laughs> it's funny. I decided that I was going to do comedy because I felt that I wanted to be a motivational speaker. And I felt like being in front of an audience, yeah. right? What is, the, what is the best thing you can do to be in front of an audience and get a point across and get the experience? Yeah. It's comedy. If you're really going to be <laughs> trying to uh, keep people's attention and things of that nature. I feel like a lot of comedy is motivational speaking at this point. With like with TED Talks now like being a big thing and like Kevin Hart being like the most famous comedian there is right now. Like I, f- I feel like he's more of a motivational speaker than he is like a... Like a regular, nothing against him, but I, I feel like he does like try to like motivate people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think public speaking, period, is a skill Yeah, a lot of people do not have. And in order to like obtain that skill, how do you go about doing speaking engage- engagements if you never spoke in front of public before? Right. You know, and then how do you get opportunity when there's no opportunities? There's open mics everywhere, but there's no opportunity for you to just come up to a place and then speak publicly. Right. You know what I mean? So how do you gain that skill? So I felt like I wanted to gain that skill and comedy was the it thing for me. And because I'm funny, it helps. So, for all of that. There you go. Um, so, my goal in comedy, I think, um, I would like to get into skits more. I'm contemplating on a character right now that yeah. I've been pushing out called Bad Auntie. And um, <laughs> so, Bad Auntie is an over-the-age woman that's just a baddie. I feel like everybody has that person who go to like a barbecue or something like that. A older woman that gives advice and things yeah. of that nature. I'm at the age where I'm 39 years old. I looked up and I'm like, oh my God, I'm old. But how can I use that for my best benefit for like my personality moving forward? Um, I couldn't wait to get old because now I can talk shit and say what I want and nobody really cares. Like I wanted to get to that age. So um, now I'm almost there to be in seniorhood. <laughs> Although I got another like 15 years to go. Right. But once I become a senior, oh, it's over. My mouth is reckless. If I'm all reckless now, but I felt like in this time and age, everybody needs an auntie. Everybody needs somebody that they can like get some information from, um, get some inspiration from, and get it right, right to the point, like real shit. You know. You remember that like old uh, comedian from back in the day, Moms Mabley? Yes. So similar to that. Would it be like kind of like that? It would be similar to Moms Mabley, yeah. But you know, she was a lesbian. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be it'd be similar to that. And she but she more, she wasn't really like attractive like that either like nothing against mom right, baby but very like late, yeah I, think. But she, it, I mean she was like a like an old lady yeah. <laughs> you know like literally a, a mom <laughs> yeah um yes it'd be similar to that um but more or less updated so I'm not old I'm just older yeah. and I have more experience so it's about having an experience. That nobody else has. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what I think the skits are going to be around. I currently have um, a couple of people helping me with writing some stuff for that. But I just need to find time. Once I find the time, it's over. That's the thing that I want to do. I always wanted to do skits. I just didn't have an avenue or angle where I wanted to go with it. Right. And then there's other characters and stuff that I wanted to portray. I know when um, 9-11 happened, I had, like, this headset with, like, a mic, and I wanted to do, like, a 9-9-11. Corona happened uh, when it first started. I had a headset and a mic, and I wanted to do, like, the 1-800-Corona hotline kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't get it off the floor, but it was definitely funny. Um, I didn't have time for it. I just went straight into community mode. Right. Yeah. Who were uh, Who were some of your heroes, like, growing up, like? 
comedy. I don't know if you had heroes, but like, who did you? Who did? Who were you into? Like, my go-to was Martin Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah, I love me some Martin Lawrence. Um, when his his comedy days, I was a big Martin fan. Like the like the Def Jam days yes. when he oh used to host. Oh my god! Yes, 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 yes. yes I loved that show. Yeah. I loved it. Um. I knew I couldn't watch it. I wasn't supposed to. I was still a child, but I loved it. I think yeah. all of the jokes was funny. Um, and then as I'm older, I like older um, comedians. So uh, another one has been Red Fox, uh, Richard Pryor. A lot of dirty mouth, right. um, make you think kind of comedians. Because yeah. that's who I am. I'm a deaf comic. Well, comic. as you can see, I got comedy albums on the, on the walls yeah. and stuff. But like that, it's like Red Fox and Richard Pryor. Like those are like the, the like great albums you know like right. i i like like a good like uh, like audio you know just like comedy you could like sit and so, sit in a basement and listen to you know so small plug pandora app um i have the pandora app and i have richard Pryor radio station and i also have red fox radio station on my app really i have um arnell what is it Ar- arnez j i have arnez j his station I have a couple of people's stations, and I just, like, turn to it and it play, like, constant um, comedy from that time frame or comedy that's like that. Right. So, I just listen to Red Fox all day. Yeah. Yeah. Funniest shit ever. I would, too. The last time I was at my dad's house, he was he was watching an old episode of Sanford and Son, and it's still, like, to this day, like, very funny. You know? It is. It's timeless. Yeah. All of it is timeless. All that old stuff is timeless. Next. Next question. Yes, dear. Thank you. I don't like this abrupt like transitioning here. I know. <laughs> um. Let's see. What do the people it's, want? To it's know? it's it's still early. I got. I haven't even like see that my newspaper is still in in the plastic here. What's your What's your sign? What's your astrological sign? Are I'm you into Taurus. that? You're a Taurus. Yes. Well, right. You told me your birthday this month. I should mm-hmm. I should have guessed, but I didn't know this month's. That's fine. Am so, I into signs? I am into people. It's weird because I will not date a Taurus. Really? I hate them. Why do you hate them? I can't date a male Taurus at all. I have best friends, female Tauruses, male Tauruses, and I we clash too much. Either they're really dumb or really smart, and it's weird because you can't tell no tell them shit. And if they haven't worked on themselves, you definitely can't have a conversation with them. Really? Because they're, like, very analytical, over-analytical, very overpowering, over... Uh, it's just over everything. And if you don't have no sense of humor and you're a tourist, oh, you suck. <laughs> don't tell me you're a tourist. Don't come with me. I'm a tourist. I'm, nope. All right. Taurus. After all the networking and connecting recently... You will soon be craving some serious me time. That sound about right? Yeah. For the moment, embrace the last bit of interactive energy that's being gifted to you. This could also be a good day to explore spiritual community you ha- uh, you have been curious about. Oh. Yeah, I get it. So... I feel like that first part is definitely the hit, whole thing hitting hit. you right now. The, the craving, the me time. Like I, I feel that. like that's what you were just telling me right before yep. the podcast. Mm-hmm. You need you need a, a day of relaxation. That's why you're up here in the sticks, the rural Connecticut, right? Right. Um, but what about the the exploring the spiritual community? What do you think of that? Um. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I think. Are that you that, spiritual at all? I am very spiritual, but I think that's more of a personal. Um, when you look at it from a personal standpoint, versus what they was just talking about, yeah. when you think about spirituality, and uh, and stuff like that, I. I want to say, what I think it means is me even going into this today to perform. I haven't performed in a year. Right. I've been very. Um, busy with a lot of outwork out outer word outer world work versus inner world work and performing is something I love to do so me not being able to do what I love to do but 
have the chance to experience it today is a big deal to my spirituality. Really? So I'm looking at it from that angle. As far as the me time, God knows. And networking, God knows. I've been doing nothing but, and I knew I needed this getaway. You know, I had to come out, do something else different. So even coming to Connecticut for the day or so, it just is something I knew I needed to do. Right. For my psyche. Yeah. So, yep. So you think you think the the performance tonight is the crux of the the spirituality? Correct. Really? Because spirituality is this personal thing. It's not necessarily God, Jesus Christ, all this other stuff. Well, tomorrow so, is you know, Easter. I get that too, but it's it's your personal yeah. feeling with yourself and your soul. Did you grow up religious though? Did you go to church when you were a kid? My mother and my grandmother used to take me to church. We grew up in Baptist church. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So I loved going to church, but then it was a picture. Like, then my grandmother passed, and we moved around a lot, so I didn't go as often. And then about maybe, uh, and then my kids' grandparents, they own a church in Harlem, and that's my church as well. Right. Um, Harlem Pilgrim Cathedral. Um, but it was about two years ago that my uncle had put some throwback pictures up, and it was me and my cousin and me holding a microphone that I realized what I felt in that moment. I used to only go to church so I could sing. Like, I was a kid, but I liked to be in front of the, the audience of people right. and hold the mic. I used to, can I sing today? Can we sing today? And I used to like going up there. and just, You like being in the spotlight. All the time. But I loved it when I was a little girl. We took like four or five years old. Right. So me thinking back 30 some odd years, I'm like, oh shit, I've been doing this for a long time. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Huh. So, um, so again, the spirituality for me is holding the mic in front of the crowd. Because that's what was I was doing when I was in church. Many years ago. Right. So, yeah. That's how I look at it. Huh. Mm-hmm. Huh. I feel like I want... We did yours. I, I want to read mine now. Mm-hmm. And you tell me what you, 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 think, you think of it. Um, Virgo, you have, uh, you have been applying your intellect toward solving the problems of others lately. Today, though, you are getting nudged to focus on yourself, which is harder for you. Your power, uh, your powerful mind is more competent than you think at solving your own mysteries. Dare to look behind the curtain. Hmm. I like that. I like the dare to look behind the curtain. I, I, I'm always obsessed with um, comedians that... that um, it's like you have what you see, right? But then there's like more, like, like um, so meta- the- metaphorically, there's a, there's more to them, like behind the curtain. Like, um, I don't know, like Andy Kaufman, you know, you don't you don't know anything about him, or um, you know, like um, as you mentioned Richard Pryor earlier, and um, I just heard Jim Carrey recently talking about him on a podcast where he was talking about one time how um, Jim Carrey actually stopped smoking weed because of something Richard Pryor said to them. They were outside of the comedy store and there was a bunch of comics standing together smoking a joint. And when it was passed to Jim Carrey, Richard Pryor said to him, you know, be careful with that shit, that shit, man, because three years of my career, I don't know if it was me or if it was that. Oh, shit. So, I feel like that that's definitely like a behind-the-curtain moment, you know? Right, right. That's like a very real moment between two comics, and that's the kind of stuff like I, I kind of obsess over. Well, I think that was more or less talking to you. About you looking behind your curtain. Yeah. And like dare to look behind the curtain. Yeah. Because you are so into others. Like do your own stuff. Yeah. Like I am very into others because that I I do this podcast to learn about other comedians. But but I always feel like, well, I'll, I'll learn about myself in the process. Right. You know? Right. But, but do I? If, if I'm not focused on it, do I ever actually do that? Or do you? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> How would I tell you? You know you. Um, I think you can look at it as a reflection now and start. You know, like, what do you know about yourself? Like, how much do you like yourself? How much do you love yourself? Are you doing things that you love on a regular basis? 
are you actually um, paying attention to your wants and your needs and being understood about them? Like, are you clear? Like, those are a lot of things you should just ask yourself anyway, because that's how you find you're happy. Because when you become certain about those things, right. everything else falls into play. You'll refuse everything that is not anything of that. Mm. Yeah. But sometimes we don't. We just accept it because we think that it's okay. Like, I don't know how to explain it. We just, we think it's okay because we're taking shit from somebody else versus actually stopping the shit that we're taking from other people and saying to them, like, listen, I don't like this. I don't want this. Um, or, you know, stepping up with how you feel. Right. You know, I, I think, I think you're right. I think, um, it's like, like, like when I said earlier that, um, you know, it's the, it's the vaccine shot that makes me think all I'm thinking about is baseball now. I think that's me deflecting something I, I'm really thinking about myself, which is like, it's more like a midlife crisis. Or you it's can't like, even have a midlife crisis yet. So it's like, I'm about to turn 30, so like... <laughs> that's not midlife. All, all the stuff I never got a chance to do when I was in high school. Okay. You know, I... I it's like, I'm now I'm just trying to like live through the kids almost, like coaching baseball. Like, well, what do you think about that? I think that that is, is uh, I don't know. I think that's personal. Yeah. Because I don't feel that way. I feel, I feel like. You said that's personal. Isn't that what we're trying to talk about? But, behind the curtain? Isn't <laughs> <yes>. that. <laughs> no. As in, as in like a personal experience. Because a lot of people do stuff for the younger generation. Right. And it's like, do, am I, the question is, am I living vicariously through this thing I'm doing for the younger people or the younger generation, right? Yeah. Um, that's the question that's posed. I think that that's a personal feeling. Um, I don't think that that is a necessary feeling. I feel like maybe if, and I'll switch it back to me, right? I work with the youth. I'm a youth mentor. I do a lot for the youth. But then when I'm a peer mentor, I do a lot for my peers. I feel like everybody needs a me. Right. Right? And I didn't have a me when I was growing up. I didn't have a program like this growing up. You might look at it and say, I didn't have this kind of baseball program with a coach like myself when I was growing up. So I want to give them something I didn't have. Yeah. But as far as living vicariously through somebody, it's kind of like watching their experience and kind of wishing you was having the same experience. It's it, To me, that's how I took it. Yeah. So it's more personal for a person because... If that's how you feel about that situation, mm. that's on you. You know, but now that I, I really think about it, it's like I, I'm i really there. I, when, I, when I look at myself as a coach, I'm like really there just to serve them. You know, like I'm like, you know, hitting baseballs to them. I'm not really like thinking like, like, wow, if this if these kids win, then I win. Like, I don't really think in that, that kind of like mentality. But I, 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 I am definitely looking for that like, and I feel like I already found it, like that Walter Matthau and like Bad News Bears, like you know, moment, like where it's like I learn just as much as from them as they learn from me, you know, where it's like the first day of baseball practice, this kid had a, a fish hook stuck in his arm, like he brought his fishing gear to school and he had it, and I had to like send him home because he had a damn fish hook stuck in his arm. That's it. That very different Go i ahead. feel but i feel like that's like oh that i feel like that already is like the bad news bears i feel like that could go in a in something like that happen at a baseball try that could go in like one of those movies you know <laughs> something weird yeah yeah it could but how does that still reflect to being uh kind of living through them it doesn't it doesn't it yeah. just was a weird thing that happened yeah <laughs> yeah you can make something out of that. I will watch it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, enough about me. Let's talk about you. We we got what eight minutes left of this podcast. Ow. What do you out. What do you want to talk about? Nothing. Nothing. No, I'm just playing. I always have something to talk about. Um, I don't know. I I think we covered like a lot of stuff. Um, as far as my comedy, uh. Let's go there. I think for me, when we always, uh, all right, so I'm single, right? And looking at online dating as an option versus really dating 
people has been like a big thing in my life, particular over the last year, right before COVID hit. And um, meeting new people and stuff like that has been a thing for me. So I decided to lean my comedy into like the world of online dating, a lot of it. And right. then COVID hit and then there was no more. Like it was weird. After COVID hit, <laughs> everything went online. But um, yeah, that's that's the direction I went in with my comedy before I had the before COVID hit. Uh, I felt like that was something that nobody really talked about as much. The online dating realm, because that shit is weird as fuck. Like it's weird, like really, really weird. Yeah. Um, you got people it, outside of everybody that lies all the time, right? You got people that just do weird shit. Like I find, <laughs> I find it weird that if you're on a profile, if you're on a dating profile, and your children are in your profile. On a dating, on not, a dating not Facebook. App. On, a well, like on a dating app, app. and your children yeah. are in your profile. That's fucking weird because obviously that's a mistake. I don't know. <laughs> I know that sounds fucked up, but yeah. it didn't work because <laughs> you're on a dating app. Like you and your kid didn't work. The parent of your child did not work with you. So don't do that. Like that's something you talk about on your first date. You have children, da da da. Or maybe somewhere in there it says have children. But it's like something you just don't do. Then you got people that have old and new pictures. And it's a really big difference. Some people between... have a very tough time separate separating themselves from their children, though. You know? No, I get it. But a lot of people do it so that they can show off that they are that parent. Um, a lot of people take and, and meet with their children the day of, take a picture with their child, and then throw the picture up everywhere. I was with my kid. I'm a great parent. And nine tenths of the time, no, you're not. You just took a picture with your kid. And if your child is your whole life and all other stuff, you probably wouldn't be on social media uh, not social media, but on a dating app, putting your child everywhere on a dating app mm. that, to meet strangers to want to like you. It's a psychological thing. I go right back to that psychological mindset. Yeah, It doesn't make sense to me unless you're looking for somebody that's going to be like, oh, he's such a great dad. How the fuck I know how kind of dad you are because you got a picture of your child on a dating profile. Who does that? Yeah, You know what I mean? And who says I'm looking to be somebody's stepmom? You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to think about stuff like that. It's just, it's weird. Then you have people that um. But you know they, they I mean, that you already have kids though. There's there's women out there that don't have any kids that like may be looking for that kind of thing. Like I didn't there's, say so, there's women out there that are kid. looking to be stepmothers that like maybe are into seeing like pictures of people with their kids. And for each is the only, that's fine. I'm just saying what's the psychological on the other side. You're you just only it? thinking that because you're like, I don't want to start the fucking Brady Bunch. And then you'd swipe the, the other yeah, way on them. But it's it's still the thought of why would you do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not even the fact of... Because you, wouldn't, of, because you wouldn't do it. Though. I wouldn't do it. But I wouldn't want somebody to do that either. That's yeah. a child. A child shouldn't be exposed to a dating website. Yeah. And they're not, on a, they're not dating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unless I'm dating you and your child. Why is your child here? Mm. But people, you're right. There's women that are interested in stuff like that. But I'm not looking at that aspect. I'm looking at why did you feel like you could do that? Mm. You know what I mean? Why did you feel like that's okay? You know, I stopped. I was on the, um, what were they called? Tinder, uh, Bumble for a little while. Ain't those the fucking apps? I What? <laughs> those are the apps you fuck on. Tinder, ain't that the, the, the app that you just hook up? Really? That's, that's, that's all it's all for that's is for? sex? Yeah. Oh, so that's why. <laughs> anyway, I got off. I got off of those apps, though. I got off of all. I decided I'm done with dating apps completely. One day, I was. I was. I I was reading the book Crime and Punishment at the time, mm -hmm. and I don't know for some reason this book is making me very paranoid because it's all about like the psychological Im implications of crime and everything. And I got super paranoid that one of my students was catfishing me on, like, a dating app. What the fuck? And it probably wasn't happening, but that's the day I decided, like, I'm done with Tinder. I'm done with Bumble. I'm done if, I, you know, like, a stranger talks to me on Facebook or whatever, like, you know. You like, should see my face. Oh, my know. God. That is weird. Yeah. That's very different. Oh, you got awful all the apps. Yeah. Did you ever get back on? Didn't ever get back on. Never got back on. 
But I think my life has has improved since then. Right. Yeah. Because you just keep your Facebook. Do you have other social medias? I have Facebook. I have Instagram, which I don't even really think is like it's it's like it's just pictures. So it's like, you know. Right. That's yours. And then um, I don't have Snapchat. Okay. That was the one I initially was like. Only high school kids are on this, anyways. Yeah, I don't want to be really on weird. this. I couldn't catch Snapchat. That was something I just wasn't able to like get into. But I have Instagram, I have Facebook, I have had Twitter, and I re got my Twitter back. I just a bunch of different stuff. Now I know they cut you off at five thousand friends on Facebook, and the closer I get to that, I think I'm like two hundred people shy of of reaching that, and it's like it's like now I gotta be. Certain that, like, the people that are friending me are real people because I don't want it to be like you know 50% fucking robots. On robots. The, so you know. they got this new thing where people are requesting people that do like cryptocurrency and shit. Mm-hmm. So you can instantly just like delete that. But I find that I don't know half the people that's on my Facebook page, and I was trying to be very selective on who I add. So what I did was I started putting, I started putting very raunchy pictures up. And as I do that, men will inbox me that are on my friends page, on my friends list, yeah. that never had any other conversation with me, that should have had some kind of networking situation with me, talk to me regularly, hello, whatever. And then they, oh, this is sexy, this is beautiful. Boop, thank you, delete, delete, <laughs> delete. I let them wean themselves out. Not yeah. that I don't mind you thinking or liking my pictures. You can go to Instagram for that. Facebook is different. Like, I like to network on Facebook. Instagram, you can go like some pictures. You know, but a friends because the friends list is only at five thousand. You, what are you here for? Right. You know what I mean. If you're not networking with me here, go to Instagram for all of that. So I've deleted a lot of people for just liking my stories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've said it. I'm very arrogant. I say it like this is how I'm going to delete you. <laughs> and people don't read, so they miss yeah. out. I don't ask questions. I look. I was like, oh, thank you, dude. Take off friends list. I'll be the first person you just delete in real life. It's just palm my forehead, probably. Oh, my God. <laughs> I will not delete you, Matt. You're a mess. Uh, anyways. Anyways. This was great. This is, uh, we actually just reached an hour. Okay. Um. Is there anything you want to promote or plug on on this podcast? No, y'all can follow me on everything Instagram and Twitter at I am Rima the Great. Um, that's R E M A T H E G R E A T. I am in front of that, and uh, just stay tuned. That's it. I don't have nothing. I have nothing right now. I'm on a hiatus, as you can hear from my horoscope. Well, the hiatus is a, <laughs> as a, the hiatus is about to end today because you're about to get on stage. I'm going to perform tonight at Shish Lounge. Shish. Yes. yes. Nice. But I don't know when the next time I'm going to perform just yet. But I have a lot of things that I'll be updating on my pages. Yeah. So if you want to stay informed, definitely follow me. So stay tuned and uh, thank you so much for being on the show and thank you so much for coming up to Connecticut to uh, to do this. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs>